Hey guys, it's Tark with Cyclone FPV, and as most of you know, today is going to be my first day. Sorry, I'm going to try to raise this uh, to actually start um, taking our stuff live to YouTube now and uh, shifting from Facebook to YouTube when we do live streaming. Um, so bear with me because I'm sure there's going to be a couple screw ups along the way. I'm still trying to get used to this. Uh, but um, what we're going to do today to kind of uh, introduce this stuff to YouTube and try to build up our audience there. Um, is I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna switch cameras here real quickly and I'm gonna show you guys what we're gonna be working on today. It's one of the new quads that I've put out and I'm sorry, I'm looking at this, uh, trying to shift the pictures here. So bear with me a second and let me see if I can get this to work. So what you're gonna see on the bench here, and the bench is a little dirty, I guess, but this is the new quad that we're talking about and I've gotta shift this camera, it's a little off angle. I've been trying to get all this stuff situated, so bear with me a second. Uh, and that should be, uh, that's probably going to be okay. All right, so um, if I can just get it a little straighter, I guess, maybe. Let me see. All right, so what you're looking at here is the new Banshee that I built uh, that I've designed here, and I'm hoping to get this to sit still. All right, so uh, that's going to work right there. So let me do a – let me see if I can get this going. All right, let's see if that will work. Okay, so what you're going to see here is this is the new uh, Banshee right here. Now, this is the uh, – it's somewhat of a, this is a little bit newer one actually because this was a challenge to try to make this one. And this is the, um, this is the five millimeter thick version. So I don't know if you can see that here and I'll try to get it as close to the camera as I can. But you can see the entire quad, uh, the gap there is about five millimeters thick max. Uh, and that is running a 40 amp ESC. Uh, this is an ultralight, super thin. Um, I, I'm gonna have to go ahead and say, unless somebody can show otherwise, I've tried to find it. But at five millimeters thick, this is I believe the thinnest uh, 40 amp, uh, you know, ready to go quad uh, out there. And it took a lot of work to get to that point. But what we're going to build is something very similar to this one. And I'm going to show you, um, I'm going to show you kind of what we're going at today. So what I've got is we're using the um, HDRC F440 stack. Uh, let me see if I can zoom out of that real quick. So there we go. So we've got the F440 stack. We're going to use the 1407 3600 motors. Um, we're actually going to use the DVR Nano. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and connect this because um, I haven't used it yet on the quads and I want to get into it uh, and test it out a little bit more. So we're going to use that as well. Uh, and I'll pick up the receiver and stuff in just a second. Um, but this is going to be the uh, frame that uh, I've cut. I cut it today uh, to be able to use it and I've cleaned it off uh, right now. So you've got the uh, G10 FR4 material. And, um, and then we've got, we're not going to use carbon fiber usually on this build. But I am using the carbon fiber arms because they were already cut for this, and uh, it'll help me to get going with the assembly. So uh, what we're going to do is go ahead and open the product first. Now, I don't know, um, as far as using this YouTube stuff, I don't know if the cameras are going to have any harder time to function or if there's any programming differences that I have to do. But uh, I will do my best to make sure, and I think I've got the other camera ready to go as well. So you should be able to get some good views there. Okay. Now, what I can't do, oh, I think, yeah, I can see chatting. All right, so now I can see the chatting as well. Um, and I see uh, Aaron, I see you guys on there. So guys, I uh, have patience with me, okay? I'm doing my best to try to make this all this new setup work, uh, being on, um, on YouTube. Uh, but let me see, I think I've got the last camera here ready to go. God, I hope this one works. Bear with me one second, and I think I can shift to it here. So let me do that one little second and I should there all right perfect now I've got my camera back this one wasn't on for a little bit okay so <clears throat> getting back to that quad that I was telling you guys about so this is the ultra thin one right and I mean it is again it's five millimeters thick super light uh, and this will actually fly uh, four inch props and it'll fly a 4s battery um, I believe the weight fully loaded uh, with four inch props um, without lipo was 175 grams total that's with the Chaos series of 1407 3600 kV motors made by Brother Hobby for us. Um, and that is a fully enclosed micro cam. And then all the components enclosed inside. It, was, it took a long time for me to get to this point, but at five millimeters thick, I mean, it, it's super light, but um, it is extremely fast and powerful. So this one is still in testing phase. I've flown it a couple times. Uh, I have not had a chance to take it out fully, uh, but what we're going to do today, and I think Aaron's the one who's got um, a couple of those uh, Banshees. I sent him two of them to test out, so unfortunately, I don't have them built now because, Aaron, you got my stack. Uh, hey, Danny, how you doing, bud? Uh, I know Danny's, Danny's going to be waiting for his quad. Um, he's got a Banshee coming. I'm uh, not a Banshee, a Diablo coming, and I said if the live feed went good tonight and I got all the cameras working properly, 
then I would go ahead and um, do his tomorrow. So I said I'm going to start doing a lot of videos, guys, and I'm not going to let you down. I am definitely going to do a lot more videos, um, <clears throat> and uh, they're going to be daily. All right, so let's not waste any time. I've got a battery that looks like it's about to run out here, so let me just shift this over and see if I can get my battery charger plugged in, and that way I can read your comments at the same time. All right. Okay, so first things first. What we are going to do, and this came at the recommendation or request, um, and I really wish I could remember who asked it. I know that Ryan uh, also asked for it, but I had been asked about um, making a frame that could hold uh, basically four boards, right? Four 20 millimeter boards. So um, you're going to have two in the front, two in the back, uh, and it's pretty narrow. Um, so I have not assembled, this will be the first time that we assemble it. Uh, so here goes. So let me just get to the point here. And if my cameras are, cameras are off a little bit, I apologize. Uh, I had to kind of uh, get them uh, get them going. So let me go over there. All right. So here's the table we're working at right now. And what we're going to do is going to go ahead and get these boxes open. And sorry about the uh, dirty work area. I have burned enough solder on here. I'm going to have to get a new one of these. Um, and I will do a picture in picture here so you guys can see them both. Okay. So. Uh, let's go ahead and get the uh, F440 open first. And I think I can see messages on there. If you guys, somebody, let me see. I'm pretty sure that I can see them. Yeah, I think so. So if you guys type, I'll be looking down here to see if they come across. Again, I'm still getting used to this with uh, YouTube. Um, and uh, so if I miss something, I apologize. All right, now let me just get this open and show you what we're working with today. All right, so in regards to HDLRC, I'll give a shout out to Fitz, my buddy over at HDLRC. Um, okay, so here we're gonna pull out the following pieces. So we've got our VTX, right? And we've got our uh, flight controller, and this is gonna be our 40 amp ESC four in one, okay? And I've got the glue gun on, glue gun on, because for those of you that have not used this or are gonna get ready to use one or order one, uh, I am gonna tell you that if you have not received the ones that were updated with the um, adhesive on the pins, you're gonna to wanna to do that just as a precaution. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get these motors going. So we're gonna use four of these uh, uh, 1407s. And I'm just gonna set them here on the board so you can see them. All right, so there's one. The second one. And I think I have a notebook here of the builds that I did for Aaron, so I'll have to check. Um, because all my measurements and everything are in there for cutting the heat shrink and all that. Um, but let's see what we've got. Now, I don't understand something, so bear with me. Let me see. Okay, so I cannot, uh, I don't know why, but when I tilt this thing, oh, there it is. Now, just leave it. This stupid thing. I'm missing all the comments, so let me adjust this real quick. Sorry, guys. Let me just adjust this because this way I can see. There we go. Fine. Now I can see the comments. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be... Um, it's gonna be uh, set up, because I know that there's people wanting to run those, uh, 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 like the Caddx Turtle, the Run Cam Split, and I tell you what, if I have to build another uh, Brat uh, frame, uh, I, I might get out of the industry. So somebody uh, asked me to do this and come up with a solution for the Brat, so uh, this would be the option, um, in the sense that it's gonna be a lighter frame, a much easier to assemble frame, um, and, uh, well, it's my frame, so that's the bonus. All right, let me get to the last motor, and then we shall get started. Okay, so motors are out, boards are out. The only thing that's not out yet is the, um, uh, the uh, DVR, and here it is. This is the Nano DVR right here. Um, all right, so we're going to go ahead and open that. That's a 20 by 20 DVR. Uh, it's going to use an SD card now. This is my first time to try to use it, so this is going to be interesting on this part. I'll review the wiring here in just a second, uh, but I've got about 50 of these in stock, and I feel like now is probably a good time to um, get started. All right, so this is the Nano, very small. For those of you that want onboard uh, recording, uh, this Nano is going to be a really good option, as is the one that I'm using on the new build, and I'm going to put a video tonight. I drew it all out in CAD, including I drew the boards so that I can see exactly how they would fit. And I used the full, that's a 30.5 size. Uh, and it's got the VTX and DVD uh, recorder built in. So I'm gonna put that online tonight and do a build most likely tomorrow with that and then present the model to you as well. Okay, so we've got everything laid out and um, what we're looking at is, uh, we're gonna put these boards aside for a second. Uh, 
All right, and we're gonna to get to our frame now. So what I did on the frame is the following. Um, there, there are some modifications since this one uh, was initially drawn out. I'm just getting a piece of this dirt off here. Okay, so the first thing is that I gave you two options for buzzers, one in the front, one in the back. This is the back area here. Uh, and I also gave you 20 by 20 holes on the bottom, uh, as well as 20 by 20 holes on the top. And this is gonna be your battery plate. And I did cut, sorry, it's this way actually. And I did cut out here so that you can, and we will do this, you'll be able to mount the VTX, keep it flush, all right? Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit on that. So you'll be able to keep it flush, right? So I think you can see that there. It will not exceed because so, your battery's gonna sit up top there, but you'll be able to see your channel selection and you also have a spot for your antenna to come out, all right? Um, and so this is made, this, this entire cut is made for this VTX and this setup. Although this is also made wide enough because I did have some requests from Todd, for example, who likes to use the Zeus. Now I did build this with the Zeus and I believe that's the one that um, uh, Aaron has, but he is going to also, I also just sent him the FR40. Okay, so we're gonna basically mount these like this. Here's your arms and these arms do lock. So there's your, just like the puzzle. So the new arm lock, which we have, that's our patent pending on that one. This is the arm lock. And so basically it'll hold them in place, tight enough so that when you put the screws in, you have no movement, right? So you've got two sets, uh, basically like this, all right? So these will lock into place. Um, and then we're gonna use our frame. Now, I'm gonna find my notebook here real quick, but when I do that, I'm going to, um, uh, hey, Josh, uh, listen, man, you get some sleep if you need to. I know things are a little rough right now, but hey, boy, I appreciate you at least giving some time up here, okay? Uh, and I do appreciate the rest of y'all as well. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and prep this board, guys, for those of you that, um, uh, and if I, zoom, I'm gonna zoom out here just a little bit so I don't get off uh, of the screen. And then let me get this one. Let me zoom in here just a little bit. Maybe you can see a little bit better like that. There, all right. So uh, I'll keep this camera angle like this while I'm working on this. Um, and then from there we will uh, shift over because you're gonna get my big old bald head in the way. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and prep both sides because I'm really not sure how I want this to connect at this point. Um, so this will be prepped with our flux. We'll go ahead and prep the VTX right now. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, prep the flight controller. Okay, and I guess we will prep this DVR and I will do my best to make sure. Uh, uh, let me make sure I see that right, okay. This will be interesting. So, all right, now. Before I get started, I do want to look at this VTX, this tiny manual to go with the tiny controller. All right, so um, they are saying on this VTX to come, for, or sorry, from the DVR, that we need to, uh, golly, I can barely see that. Um, we are going to go from the camera to the VTX, and then from the VTX, we're gonna split it to the, uh, basically, I guess we're gonna splice it to the input, and then we are going to put the audio if we are doing audio. Fine. Well, good luck with that. We'll figure that one out as we get there. Okay. Um, first things first, I want to go ahead and put some glue down um, on this, like I was talking to you about, to keep make sure these pins stay in place. So we're going to dab just, and I do this, if you don't have any, I mean, if you have a board and you haven't put the glue yet or anything, go ahead and just put a little bit right here along. And I'll, I'll zoom in here in a second and show you what I'm doing, but just put some along there and don't worry about it. Just get on there. Good. If you do happen to put a little too much glue and it gets up on the pins and you can't put your flight controller down, when you squeeze your flight controller down, just put a heat gun or a blow dryer to it and it'll melt that glue just enough so you can push it down. But this is what we're doing basically, okay? So, uh, well, here, I'll go to this camera, I guess. So I am putting glue uh, right along this pin base here and along the pin base on this side. And I don't know if that's blurry or not. Let me switch, Let me switch cameras here and see if I can do it better this way. All right, so... If you can see that, it's gonna be right uh, along that base there. And if it'll zoom in, there you go. All right, so um, that's what I'm doing to just make sure those pins stay in place because there has been issues where it's uh, come out and we wanna make sure. So I think you can see that there better. Okay, and then all that little stringy stuff I'll pull off in just a second. All right, so that being said, let's get back to work. Uh, and uh, at this point, uh, 
I know, I haven't done a full build in a while, right? Uh, but uh, I'm going to go ahead. I mean, I used to do them quite a bit, and then, um, I don't know, I just got busy, and I just haven't had the time, but we're going to get started. I do want you guys to pay attention to the uh, soldering technique here. Um, I think I just went off screen there. Uh, but I do want you, because as you know, as most of you know, we are the RMA warranty department here for, or warranty location for HDLRC in the U.S., and so I do get a lot of repairs based on bad soldering. Um, I know these pads are really small, so guys, if you could just maybe watch a little bit, and I'll try to show you some pointers on how to solder. I've got a video or two on there um, uh, on how to do it on our, um, on our YouTube thing. All right, so first things first is make sure you've got a good solder tip, uh, good iron, right? So I'm going to go ahead and get that ready. Okay, now, um, the most important thing on these... Where am I at? I'm over here, I guess. Okay. So the most important thing on these is going to be to make sure, let me zoom in, that you just use a little bit of solder. Uh, the biggest problem I'm seeing is that people are using too much solder and it's starting to clump up and it's starting to cause problems here. So I'm just going to do this really quickly and, um, and show you guys how easy it should be if it's done properly. And if there's anything wrong with the cameras, uh, but please let me know. Hey, look, I appreciate you tuning in, man. I know everybody's got to get to work, and I usually won't be doing them this late. I've actually changed that because I started enjoying my sleep a lot more. Um, but I said I would get videos up ASAP, and I didn't want to let anybody down. So I'm going to do this, and I don't know how many people will stay awake and stay tuned in, but I just appreciate you all taking the time uh, to, um, to just uh, hang out for a little bit. All right, so I'm going to do this a little different than normal. I'm just going to tape this down, uh, and I'm going to tape it at the angle that I want to use it at. So... Here's what we're going to do, and I'll show you guys exactly how it's going to come out. All right. So let's make sure we're down good. Yep. And we're going to see, make sure our gun's good, our iron's good. All right, let me get that ready just a minute. All right, so that's good to go. All right. So I'm going to get the iron. I want the iron just a little bit hotter. Uh, all these are prepped to go. And I'm going to go grab my notebook real quick and make sure if I have notes on this build. <coughs> Okay, so I think I do. I think I got it here. Okay, so this is the Exodus, Exodus, Banshee 345. Perfect. Got my notes. And we're going to get ready to go. Okay, so I'm going to clean off the tip of the soldering iron, and we're going to get started. All right, and the first thing we're going to do is take very good care not to hold the iron down too long. It's, it's about a one-second thing. Um, it'll be much quicker, and you don't have to cover the whole pad. But what you want to do is just, just put on your solder sparingly at the beginning. All right, because you're going to be coming back at it anyway with the wire. So just get it to where it's kind of prepped up a little bit, right? And then always put your finger. If you can keep your finger down, then you haven't had the solder iron on there too long. And like I said, don't worry about covering all the pads right now. It's not critical to cover the pads 100% before you get the wiring down. You're just going to get that initial startup going. So here, let me get going here. And you can always go back and touch it up. So let's get going. Okay. All right, so right now I'm done. As far as I'm concerned, except for like maybe this one pad right here, which I'll just hit real quickly, all right? My prep at the beginning is pretty much done. What I'm not going to do is I'm not going to do these pads right now. Uh, the board is still pretty cool. I can keep my fingers on it so I know that it's not too hot. And then the end result is um, I've got solder. Sorry, right there. I've got solder on all my pads that I need, right? There's not a lot of solder on there. I've got my glue, which is dried, which is right there. So I'm going to set this aside. Now we're going to go on to the next one. All right, so let's do that. And this will be our flight controller. So let's just get going with this one real quickly. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay.
And I know that for our smart audio, we're gonna go underneath. So we're gonna find our TX6, but I'm just gonna go ahead and, hey Dustin, what's going on buddy? Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'll look up every, hey Julio, how you doing? I'm looking down and I'll look back up at the screen here. So let's just go ahead and knock these out. And remember guys, if you've been soldering like this, you don't have to put the solder down every time because it's already still holding onto the iron. So you can just touch that iron down. So like if you look at this RSSI, for example, right? So I'm not even gonna use iron, but there you go, because I've already, I've still got some residue left on the tip of this iron. So therefore I'm good to go. Uh, I don't, I'm not putting a current sensor on here. So I'm just gonna put that anyway though, so we can get it done. And then you can see here, I've got a five volt right here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and touch it. No solder in my hand, but it's gonna come right off the tip and stick to it. So there's the flight controller, all done, all right? So uh, I guess we can do, we'll do the DVR, and then we're gonna do the, uh, on my on my iron, uh, I have the temperature at uh, 360 Celsius. And I will tell you that you need to just touch it and go quickly. Uh, but uh, if you have the right iron and the right solder, then it's a piece of cake. So, uh, and I'm using the Kester solder, 60, I think it's 6337. 60, yeah, I don't think, yeah, 63, 30, something like that. I'll show you this spool here in a second. All right, so that's done, all right? So we'll set that aside. And then we'll just finish with the VTX, all right? And we would have prepped pretty much everything for, um, uh, so we'll do one, two, three, four, five. All right, and then just to finish these off, so I can show you that without any soldering, uh, without any, there you go. All right, so those are done. Now, like I said, you're gonna you're gonna pre-tin your wires, so there's gonna be more solder going on there. So you don't have to like make this the the, the initial uh, tinning of the board that big of a deal. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do now that that's done is we're gonna go ahead and lay this out, and that's gonna be the most important part to make sure everything fits right. So let me um, let me shift gears here. And we will now get ready to lay this out. So we know that this is our base right here, right? And um, so what we want to do is uh, we also have a bottom piece, which is right here. This is where the receiver is going to go. And I think in this case, I'm going to probably use uh, an RXSR. Uh, but let me just see. Yeah, I'll grab an RXSR. All right, so here's the RXSR. And you're going to see me do an update on this because I haven't done one yet on this particular one. I hope there's one in here. I just realized this bag is open, so it may be the one on my desk. So hold on a second. Yeah, so here it is. Okay, uh, I don't think I've done the update yet on this one. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and knock that out real quick. And I won't make you guys have to watch that. Um, but for those of you that haven't seen the update, I don't know. Let's see what we got. Welcome to open. Yeah, 6337. That's exactly right. All right. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and get the update. Okay, and so if you're using the, um, I guess you don't need, you don't need that second screen there, but if you use the uh, QX7, for example, um, we're gonna go ahead and get this going. <clears throat> All right, so let me hold down my menu, go to my firmware, and I have RxSR right here. And then I'm only gonna do these two. So I'm gonna go ahead and flash that real quick. And hopefully, there we go, it's writing, and you can see kind of, you can see the light working. So the way this board is gonna sit is, uh, it's gonna actually go on this bottom plate, which is gonna mount underneath. And then what'll happen is these arms will actually fit around it uh, like this and lock into place, okay? So um, I'm gonna take that off and we're gonna do that. Now, the rest of it is gonna be getting the um, boards mounted properly. Uh, and I have not done this build with the uh, F440. So this will be the first time. The last one I did was with the Zeus. Um, you will notice the front is gonna be with these three holes because that's where we're gonna put the camera. Uh, and so I'm gonna tell you that, and I'll update my notes here, but if I'm not mistaken, I need about one millimeter of space off of the frame to be able to get the um, pads off, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and uh, get that ready. And we'll see, so if we're gonna do that, we're gonna use a five millimeter spacer um, for the board. So I guess we can use what HDLRC sent us then for that one, that won't be an issue. 
but we're not going to go much taller than that, that's for sure. Now, hopefully this is all going to fit in this frame. I have not tested this frame with this build. That's why it's kind of interesting to do it live and hope that nothing screws up big time. So let me just shrink this out a little bit. Let's see what we got. We're going to do a practice run here just to see how everything fits, all right? Um, so let me grab the following items. And I'll scoot this up a little bit. And we'll let that keep updating while we get started so we don't waste any time. Now, this is their, this is their set of screws and stuff. I'm not going to be using these for the most part, but they do have some uh, items that I need so we can do this. for Actually, it's too long. It's going to take me forever. Let me just find it. Let's try a, uh, let's see, two millimeters down, four millimeters down. We'll do a 14 millimeter screw and see where we're at. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the nylon uh, fastener here and I'm just going to kind of get it on there because that's going to give me about a millimeter off the board and then we can see how we're at with that. All right, so let me do that. All right, that's one. We'll do one more just to keep everything in place and then we'll see if we clear it. Oh, well, let me finish the second update. All right. So our RXSR is going to sit right in this little plate right here. All right. Um, and there's just enough room for it to fit with no problems. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we can fit. I mean, where's my flight controller? It's somewhere under here. All right. So if we don't want to change the orientation of this board, right? Um, so we are going to be aiming it like so. So there's forward. Okay. So this board is going to sit something like this. Now, at at one half millimeter or one millimeter, I believe, I'm sorry, I have to look with the light here. Let me just check and make sure that we're not hitting anything. Uh, it looks to be okay, I guess. And because it's not carbon fiber, G10 is not conductive, so any small touch isn't going to be a big deal at all. Um, but that looks actually pretty good. So I think we're good with that. So then we'll go ahead and test um, the total height uh, with the flight controller in. Make sure that everything clears. And while that's doing that, the RXSR is still being updated, so we're still in good shape there. What's the tape on the hex driver? You mean this stuff? Um, that is because I have everything color-coded. I mean, if you could... Um, see here like this you know so if you look at these screws you see all the colors that I hand color yeah I, I sit up here right and I, I think I've told you guys I do these by hand so I just, just take a thousand screws out so everything in my shop is color coded so I can tell you exactly like what color means what size screw what size screwdriver and so forth that way I'm not trying to separate all this stuff um, and trying to having to measure everything so my screwdrivers are done um, the same way so that I know which one to grab because I have a hundred of them sitting in front of me and, I don't, and they're all the same color so unless you read the size which they're not ever turned the same direction to where I can read the size then I just know to grab by the color just makes me work faster I guess all right so there's our RXSR um, so we're gonna actually now get to measuring this and make sure that our flight controller fits without any issue all right all right so there's our flight controller going on right now. And I believe that those screws are going to be just long enough to have everything fit properly. Let me just make sure. All right. Mm. Screws may be a tad bit short. Uh, but that's all right. All right, so in this case, like I was saying, even the glue that I put on, it's a little stuck on one side. It went up a little high, so I'm just going to heat it up real quick, push the board down, and it'll make room for the board to go all the way down perfectly. 
All right. So I used a 14 millimeter screw, and it looks like I'm gonna have to go a little bit, not much though. I mean, it, it actually almost fits pretty good with 14 millimeter. I think that's a, that may actually grip. Let me check real quick. Uh, I, I'll probably go with a 16, yeah, because that's not gripping well enough. I mean, it does hold, but it's not gripping that well. Yeah, that's why the screws have yellow on them. It tells me like the size. So uh, yellow is 16 and seven millimeter. Uh, gold is six millimeter, gold is nine millimeter, silver is eight millimeter, 20 millimeter, and green is 25, 14, and four. So that's how I know real quickly. That way when I have about 200 screws in a pile, I'm not having to pull out the, uh, the ruler just to sit there and figure out what's what or get the calipers out or something. Okay, so it does hold at 14, but I'm gonna go ahead and go to 16 because that's a very, uh, I don't know if you can see that, but it's a very, uh, there's, not, there's not enough play to get a good enough grip. So I'm gonna change to 16. So let me make my note here. The first note I need to make is that on the F440, we need to use 16 millimeter for the flight controller. All right, and in this case, as you can see, 16 millimeter is yellow, and 16 millimeter in the M3 is yellow. So everything is kind of tied together so you don't have to worry about it, all right? All right, so now with this working, the next thing to do is gonna get the top plate on to make sure that we've got clearance there. And so what we've gotta do is make sure that we clear the top plate, still have the battery enclosure, and fit this flight, and flip the, uh, ES, uh, the VTX. So on the VTX, um, I believe that we have to clear that looks like about, uh, sorry, let me shrink this out a little bit. That looks like it's gonna be about, um, I don't know, almost two millimeters, right? So I think in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a spacer. And um, if Aaron, Aaron, if you could look at what I did on yours, I don't know if you can tell me what's on there because I don't have a note on it. Uh, let me see, uh, motor wires, mids, uh, front step, motor heat shrink standoff. Hmm, actually it may, it may, it may not be that bad. Um, all right, so let's do that. Let's grab um, those and this. Let's see where we're at, okay? So we will take an eight millimeter, which is silver, like you can see, and we're gonna go ahead and get started and make sure that we've got the right size for the VTX. And I don't believe one does it, but I think two will. So I'll put the spacer down here and I'll use another eight millimeter on this end. Because with a quad this thin with four boards, it's, you've gotta be, I mean, there, I, I believe at the, end of, at the end of this build, there's less than a millimeter of gap between the VTX and the DVR. Um, what's up, what's up, what's up? God darn it, these little small pieces in my fat sausage fingers are not working together today. All right, let's try it again. All right, today this thing hates me, hold on. I'm gonna change the screw. I think the screw's actually damaged on the front there, so let me try another one. So we do the preliminary fittings, right? And then I swear this thing is a pain. There we go. All right, so um, we do the preliminary fittings because the worst thing is to get done and then it doesn't fit properly. So let me go ahead and get this going. Get this one on here. And then let's lay in the VTX. Make sure it clears. Okay, it definitely clears. Um, it definitely clears that issue, it's not touching. So I think that we're safe to go that route. And as you can see, you'll have full visibility of the screen. I mean, of your uh, channel here. So um, yeah, I would say that that works out pretty well. And you don't, I don't even think you need uh, the half piece. So let me just check again real quick and I'll add this to the notes here for the build notes. No, it's pretty solid right there. Uh, so yeah, we've got nothing touching. So I think, I mean, we've got one piece touching. No, we will need it. All right. So we are gonna need it because we've got one piece touching. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that on there. So let me make a note here. So we're gonna use um, for VTX, we're gonna use a nylon fastener and spacer. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. Um, let me get 
that out of the way. And what else do I have here that I can use? I may even try to use these. This actually would be pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and mount the VTX right now because I need to mount the VTX and then mount the DVR. So I think the route I'm gonna go is actually, I'm gonna use, let me see if this will fit. Uh, that should be okay. We'll go ahead and put all four in here right now so we can get this mounted and going. Best case, we can get down to a seven millimeter screw and really save some room, but uh, I don't think we're gonna have an issue at this point. So, and guys, this build is gonna take a while. Um, so please, if I bore you, I completely understand, but I will not have my feelings hurt. I just, uh, if you don't keep watching, but um, I do wanna do these live builds because these are gonna be kind of a part of the kits that people can build on their own. And these builds have helped some people, so I, feel it. It's a good move, but if you get if you get bored, I understand. All right, let's do one more spacer. And let's do one more screw here, or one more faster. And I think we've got our base for our VTX done. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in our uh, DVR. So let's put this in first. That's clear, that clears perfectly. So um, yeah, it'll be one, it'll be one uh, nylon spacer and one half millimeter steel spacer. Let me put that on the notes. Okay. All right, so there we go with that. And now we'll go ahead and put um, our nylon uh, fastener back on to close it up. And because there is enough room on this board, um, where the fasteners go, you can use a uh, steel fastener at this point. And if you feel like you're gonna be flying really hard, uh, be my guest to do it because you will not come in any contact um, with anything else. Yeah, <laughs> I'll send you the parts. It's always fun. All right, let me get this fastened. And then you guys are gonna get an idea of what this layout's gonna look like. Oh, you know what? Um, sorry, one second, guys. Where is, hold on, sorry, my apologies. Um, oh boy, where to go, where to go? Okay, all right, here we go. Sorry, I have to, um, that's for my sons there, my son, Jaden, who's a big Lego fan. I told him I'd have my guys watching tonight, so they're right there, and give a shout out to my son. Uh, I know he's not up watching this, but uh, at least he knows I kept my word. My Lego dudes are gonna be making sure I don't lose my stuff. All right. All right, so there's our VTX. Fastened, good to go, plenty of room. Not grounding out, obviously it's, it's not carbon, but I mean, there's definitely some good room here. Now we've got to fit the DVR. The DVR is gonna be a little different, okay? The DVR is gonna go upside down. Um, because there's really no risk here of this uh, of the SD card pad uh, slot touching the frame at all. And so uh, the only thing that we have to do is make sure that it mounts it away to where you can access the SD card. And that's gonna go just like this. Now, to make this work properly, um, I am going to use uh, self-locking. Uh, I remember this part from my notes. Uh, so we're gonna use some self-locking nuts here. And um, I just have to remember the screw size. So on this one, I need to put for VTX, we're using eight millimeters. And for the DVR, we are going to use, uh, let me see, probably use eight millimeters. We'll try that, Let's see if eight millimeters works around the board. I know, I did make a pilot. See, I had a Lego guy pilot, I think Brandon, I sent it to a guy named Brandon a long time ago. I don't think the Lego guy survived, but it was a heck of a, 
was a pretty cool video because he sat right in front of the, the camera. All right, let me see if this is going to be, this may be too long, but let's just see real quick. All right, so um, the first thing is I want to go ahead and just pop this on there and make sure that I believe that that clears with that issue, and it does. And that gives us just enough room. So it was 8 millimeters, so that's good. So we'll go ahead and put all these on. Then we'll put the frame together. If that clears, we build everything out. Sounds like my screwdrivers had better days here, but all right, all we gotta do is have it last one more time and we're good to go. Okay, last one, guys. And this should hopefully accomplish the task of having four, four boards, okay? So I would really, and I can tell, and you'll be able to see this because I have a build of doing that brat live and you'll be able to see this and see how much easier it is once you build it, how much easier it is to get everything to fit properly. Uh, but let me go ahead and get this going. All right, so if everything goes well, this should now fit perfectly just like this. And it looks like it does, and so the challenge will then, to be, will then be to just put everything together. And let me just check something out here. Yep, that's it. So let me go ahead and put these uh, fasteners on, and then we can test it and put the board, to, put the frame together, and make sure that everything closes. All right, so that fits nicely. As you can see, you've got three of the four boards already ready to go. And our goal now is to sit this one like this and clear just enough space. So what we have to do is we have to look at the overall uh, space that's left. And I believe it should fit within 10 millimeters. If I'm not mistaken, it should be a 10 millimeter. Uh, I think I'm gonna stick with purple too, because we've got purple motors, we've got purple everything. Let's just go ahead and do that, all right? So uh, this should clear, and if it doesn't, then we're gonna have to figure out what needs to be done to make it clear a little bit better. And we may go, I guess we could go a little bit bigger. I think the biggest problem is gonna be, uh, actually, flight controller, I may go 15 just because it will fit 10, but the flight controller is gonna give me a headache. So let me do 15 just to make it to where we don't have too much issue. And 15 is still gonna be a super thin, um, uh, hey bud, how you doing, man? Yeah, thanks for joining us, for sure. Uh, I appreciate it, and I believe 15 is going to be perfect. Uh, I know 10 fits, um, but uh, it will take a change to make that flight controller, to make the ESC, uh, sorry, not the ESC, the USB um, section uh, go right. So let me just do this real quick, just so we can get an idea of where we're at. I want to show you guys what we're working with. And then we can take it from there. And I'll still, like I said, 15 millimeters will still keep it thin. Now I do have this quad down to five millimeters, which is what you saw me pull out earlier, but that is not with four 20 millimeter boards. All right. Now with uh, the Zeus on board uh, and 1100 series motors, this could be easily eight millimeters. But um, this flight controller, the USB, is what's 
keeping me about one millimeter off. And I'm not gonna mess with it right now because I think the kit would be a little too difficult. So, all right, well, <coughs> at the way this height is, um, I could flip, I guess I could flip it around, but I think still at 15 millimeters, I'm gonna be satisfied if this was a do-it-yourself because it's gonna be a little easier to function around. Um, but uh, this is what you're looking at right here. It's still pretty thin, uh, but to give you a comparison, and I, I wish I could take the props off, but if you look at the two, look at them from the back view, I guess, you'll see the difference. Uh, five millimeter is the top one, and 15 is the bottom, so this is the ultra thin, but this is an extremely hard one to put together. Uh, the soldering took me three hours um, because uh, everything is wrapped underneath. It's real pain. Uh, but we're gonna make this one work with a 40 millimeter, and then what will, what's really important about this is you could then make this a five inch quad. This is what would happen on the five inch quad. Anyway, so you're still set. So here's what the look is. I'll go ahead and finish that up. Um, the only difference on the five inch quad is the arms are cut. Since this is a modular quad, the arms are just cut for five inch, but the same body's used, so you don't have to sit there and buy anything else. All the arms are interchangeable. You can go three, four, and five on this. That's why the model is called the Banshee 345, because you can fly either one, and you can change the height configuration based on what you're using. Let me go ahead and make sure all this fits. And it looks like it's gonna be without any problem, so that's perfect. All right, and I think I'm gonna stop here as far as putting it together because I need to wire it. But um, I, liked, I do like the way it's fitting. Uh, there is plenty of room at 15 millimeters. It does fit at 10 except for that uh, USB. And most likely I'd have to make a change on this frame, but even at 10 or at 15, I'll take it. So um, let me just put this one on. All right, so that's, that's part of what you're gonna be looking to build, okay? All right, now with that done, uh, let's get going. And I think what we'll do is we'll start with the uh, I say we start with the motors and the ESC, if you guys are good with that. And uh, I'm sure most of you will fall asleep before I get done with that part. But it's probably the best order to go in. And I'm pretty sure that my pre-measurements from the original build are having my motor wires at 60 millimeters. But I may even stretch that out just a little bit. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and take the, ES uh, the flight control off. There's no need to have it right now. on and I want to say that for the arms we use 10 millimeter but I'll have to check as well no that may be too long hold on yeah 10 millimeters too long so let's see, for the arms, we'll go with, try a nine or an eight. Maybe an eight actually would be better. Let's see. Can actually do pretty good. So let me go ahead and do that. And you guys will see just how easy it is to build this thing once you are told what screws to use. I'll just make notes of it on mine. Uh, arms is eight millimeter. Arms eight millimeter screw. Okay. Um, and then what we'll do is we will take this bottom plate off because we still have to put the RXSR on. And we said we're going to use 16 millimeter for the flight controller. So I'm going to put these 14 millimeters away. Okay. <clears throat> I'm 
This is how the arms are gonna lock in, just like that. Put the other eight millimeter here. Now those are in place, put the other ones. Accidentally wipe my leg entries off the table. There they go. Gotta watch. Hey man, I work all night too. Let me tell you, it's pretty interesting when you're up and nobody else is. I mean, you got a lot of work done, nobody bothers you. I guess that's the best part. All right, so we're gonna get rid of these 14 millimeter screws. We're gonna go with 16, which are the yellow. Okay, we're gonna pop this piece off here because we have to get our RXSR on that. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and put this last arm on. All right. All right. Now our RXSR is. Hmm. Where the heck did I put it? Here it is. Now normally I would not leave this plug on here, and I'm not so sure I'm going to leave it. But I'm going to see how much room I have first. Uh, but it is designed to fit perfect like this, and you should have no problem. But I want to make sure I clear. The, where the flight controller and the ESC are going. So let me pop this on here real quick and make sure that I can make that all clear without any issues. Okay, and you see how that snaps in there. I mean, it's gonna keep these arms uh, extremely stable. All right, it fits right in that gap. Now, if I put this here, uh, that's not gonna happen. So we may have to just solder it. Let me just check. Well, you know what, I've got plenty of room on this build because it's so high, so I think I'll just do that and call it a day. All right, so um, in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and put a double-sided tape down, right? So let's cut a small strip of tape. Oh, well, somebody took my scissors, so give me a second. <clears throat> should fit right in the gap right there okay just like that and then go ahead and clear that off
And I put the slots on here, you can see underneath. If you'd rather just zip tie it, that's what these slots are for right here. So you could zip tie it if you wish. I'm not gonna worry about it because uh, this combination, plus being right under the flight controller, is gonna be just fine. Um, now, for those of you that have used the RXSR, uh, and there's always some confusion about this, um, I will not be using, uh, maybe I'll use the S bus or the S port, I don't know, but I'm not using PPM. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove cable here. I may use the S bus or uh, the S port, I mean, we'll see. Save your cable though, because that's a good wire to keep using. I may have to put that on after, but I'm just gonna see now if I can get this to all squeeze in there. Perfect. You see it'll pop in, there's no problems, everything clears, right? You got your place for your wires here, for your antenna, and there's your uh, receiver, all right? Now, um, given that we're going to lay this out, and I believe it was this direction, where's my flight controller now? There it is, I wanna say it was like that, and it is, yes, okay, so this is going this way, all right. So we're gonna sit this and actually prop it up five, so we can clear that uh, plug, and then we will plug this one, which will give us 16 to 20. So we'll go a little bit taller on the um, screws here. So let me see, we're gonna use 16, so I'm probably gonna go to a 20. Let's see if a 20 over there with no problem. Now, if you take this plug out, you can shrink it really down, and on the super thin one, that's exactly what I did. Um, plus, you have all this room here that you can mount it on if you want to. For right now, let me just make sure I get this thing done. So let's see if this will work. Yeah, that should clear, I hope. Let me make sure. Yep. Okay. So if we do that. plenty of room left and that'll be good room to put on the uh, and if you take the 15 millimeter thing you're talking about almost exact height right there so um, we will go ahead and go that route and uh, call it a day now one thing I will do to just save even more space though and if you find yourself in this predicament this is pretty much the best workaround I think is to invert the screws which you can do and just put the fastener at the bottom because the top of the screw has far less takes up far less room than any excess, but let's just do this and see what we're going Let's see, so we use a 20, so let's try, let try an 18. Let's see if we can clear a little less. Yep, that'll work. All right. All right, so we'll get to mounting the motors now, and I believe we're gonna be cutting them at 60 millimeters. So let me get to that as well. 
and then I'll go ahead and invert these screws when I'm done. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. It'll come out pretty nice, and you'll save yourself some room. All right, so first thing, let's go ahead and get this ESC put on once and for all so that we can get the wire, motors wired up. And so if we look at this, we are going to go... Use a five millimeter for this one. And these screws don't get along sometimes. Let's see if that'll do it. All right, so we will measure from here. All right, so we know that the ESC is going like this, and we want to be able to zip tie it down and then come in, and we'll come around like that. So I would say that we are talking about this length, which is going to be, let's say from the, what were you talking about? I don't know, I mean, I, I said 60, but I'm gonna go 65. I just feel like if there's any error on the wire, we gotta have some room. And if not, we can always tuck it away. So let's go ahead and put this away. And then I believe I have a 65 heat shrink, so let me find it real quick. Makes it easier when you've got a preset length somewhere here, and this is 60. We need 65. 68. All right, well, if I don't have 65, I'm going to cut one right now. So let me grab this one. That's going to be 70, so we'll go 65 here. All right. Such a waste for such a small amount to cut these wires. Hmm. And make a note, motor wires, motor wires equals 65 millimeter. Okay, one. All right, so now by using the shrink tubing, we know that they're all cut the exact same length because the shrink tubing is our measurement tool. So at 65, they should all fit exactly the same and the pattern will look exactly the same. So remember, keeping things in uniform is kind of critical. All right, so let me get this junk out of here. Let's clean off the bench a little bit. And now it's time to start our soldering and our pre-tinning and all the other goody stuff. So let's get all this stuff away. Keep my Lego man right here. And let's pretend these wires real quick. And remember guys, you don't need to strip that much off, so just make sure, just minimal, about a millimeter and a half, maybe a millimeter even, just somewhere around there, nothing more. Once you pretend them, you'll be just fine. All right. My 
advice is to just get them all done at one time. So go ahead and finish doing the whole thing. All right, two down, two to go. Um, and so, I guess while I'm doing this, I'll give you guys a few things that um, I mentioned in the past doing videos based on requests. So, go through the website. If you have time, go through my website. If you see a product on there that you're interested in or that you have and you just don't know all the ins and outs of it or you need some help with it, find it if I've got it. And I'll put up a video. And my, my deal is that I'm, I'm going to try to put up a video every request. I mean, depending but usually within a day or two so if you find a piece of equipment I don't care if it's a, tra a transmitter or a receiver or a camera or whatever and you want to see a live video on it you let me know it's gonna be the easiest way for me to show product and at the same time also try to get you guys taken care of all right all right let's go ahead and I'm just gonna start putting flux on these them up and then it's time to go ahead and get them ready and normally I use those alligator clips and all that but I'm trying to go through this so we don't kill too much of your time but I am gonna have to switch cameras so that you guys don't get staring at my ugly mug head the whole time so I'll give you this camera right here so I can use a magnifying glass Guys, make sure you do twist that wire um, before you try to tin it, just so that the, um, the strands don't, uh, so you don't get a bunch of strands kind of hanging out. One more motor, and we get this solder in. Okay, those are all pretend. So we're good. Now we're gonna go ahead and take a. Oh, let's see what color we're using. Purple. So let me see if I got a purple.
sure this fits the wire okay. Maybe too small. Okay, so we're going to take half that length. So let's see where we're at. This is a 40 millimeter. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll probably go 30. I hate wasting that. Actually, I'm going to go 20 because I don't want to waste this. Let me just go 20. It'll still come out just fine, but I don't think that 10 millimeter is going to make much of a difference. So I'll put down on there 30 millimeters. Okay. Drink. Okay. All right. I'm gonna shrink this down a little bit. All right. Let's get going. It's shrinking. Heat shrinking these motors. All right, two more motors, we're ready to go. I know it's getting late, guys, so feel free to head on out. I just want to thank you all for tuning in at least. And we will have more builds coming up, plus the test flight on this one. And then this one will be put up for sale on the website.
go ahead and make sure you do your zip ties the same. So we're going to pull them all to the center, keep them looking good and uniform. And the way I have this going is I would start with one right before the heat shrink starts. So that's still in the factory heat shrink. And then I would do another one right about here. Right towards the edge of the heat shrink that we put on. Keep everything in line, make it look good. All right. And we're gonna go ahead and put this on so we can see exactly how it's fitting. And because of that, we're just gonna stick with this screen only because I've got to use All right, so that's done. Put the next two on and that way we can just go straight to soldering and no more having to turn this back over. Let's do the next one real quick. All right, that zip lock is empty, that zip lock is empty. All right, guys, last motor. There we go. Uh, where are we at? All right. And let's get this out of the way.
Okay, so we've got our four, mo four, four motors on. Now uh, we're going to go ahead and zip time down because I want to make sure everything fits. So we'll go to our motor number one. Remember guys, keep the pattern the same. So we're gonna go right above the yellow heat shrink that we added. So that's gonna go in line with here. We'll put this right here. And then we're gonna go right above, right before the um, heat shrink that we added ends. So I'll show you this one. Make sure your wires are straight. Two should look pretty identical now. We'll do the next two, and then we're good. All right, last motor to zip tie. Thanks, Julio. And I feel like it's, I know it's boring to watch, man. I, I mean, I'm sure this is just agonizing, but hopefully if there's anything that I'm doing that you may have had a question about, hopefully this will help answer it. But thanks, bro, I appreciate you. Last zip tie on there. There we go. Okay. So now we've got all four motors looking uniform. Now it's time to get the ESC done. And to do that, we're just going to go ahead and continue our soldering. But we're going to... What am I hitting here? I'm hitting something. There we go. Right, I'm going to go ahead and screw down one end of the ESC so that it quits bobbling around. And we can finish this job once and for all, right? All right, so let's uh, go to this camera only so I can use the stuff here. And let's get started. Okay, one more motor to go, this sucker is ready to go to the flight controller, so let's get this done, and here we go. Now, if you'll notice, I left the wires longer than usual, uh, but that's because I have a feeling I'm going to make some changes down the world, uh, down the world, down the road. Um, all right, so if you can look at the pattern now, what I wanted to do was try to keep, you guys know me, you've seen me do builds before, I try to keep everything 
at least in the same pattern to where it looks mirrored as best as I can. And so what I want to do is try to have a good mirrored look. And for the most part, it's somewhat mirrored, I guess. All right, so there's our motors. Now I'm gonna go ahead and prep the uh, uh, battery LiPo pads. Okay, those are done. All right, that's good. does it for the ESC except for two spots which I will tend to in a little bit. Now where is my flight controller? Okay. That looks good. Everything there looks good. All right, so we know that our VTX, now because of the height of this quad, we could actually just mount the VTX straight off of the board, but I kind of like it where it is. However, we do need to get the wire over to the flight controller. So what I'm gonna do is, in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and run a wire off the flight controller now for the smart audio. And there was this one wire that I pulled off of the, matter of fact, I'm gonna pull this one off too, so hang tight a second, let me see. I can even get to it. I think I can. So I'm going to get to this uh, receiver here under the flight controller. I'm going to take that set of pins, or that set of wires there. And I am going to go ahead and take the smart port out because I won't be using it since the update allows me to run RSSI on the channel 16. Let me go ahead and pull that with the yellow. And twist these. And then well, Price Guy uses really good quality wire, so save this because that's what we're going to use to pull our um, uh, smart audio to our VTX. So we'll use the yellow for that. So on your VTX, on your on your flight controller, uh, what we're looking for, man, you guys can't see that. Hold on. Uh, no, let's just do this. Okay, so what you're looking for on your flight controller is TX6, which is right here, right? But because it's on the bottom of the board, I'm going to go ahead and just wire it now. This way I can mount the flight controller and not worry about it. So I'm just going to do that. Matter of fact, I'll probably just wire, pull out the power while I can. Okay, and then uh, I don't think we're going to be using anything. Wait a minute. Put that in the wrong way. My bad, my bad, my bad actually belongs right here. That's done. So run over there. This is good. This one's good. We've got five volt coming for that. So we can now go ahead and plug in our receiver.
just get my fingers in there then and do it. teach you take the wires you don't need out ahead of time It'd be much easier on you all right so let's go ahead and on our flight controller now so we're going to go with 18s upside down so the way that's going to work is we're going to take our flight controller wherever i just put it here it is and we're going to go ahead and put our screw in upside down like this then we're going to go ahead and feed our spacer and you guys can't see that damn it i'm sorry Okay, so by doing this, you're going to save about a millimeter or two off the top, which in a case of a small quad is extremely important. So invert your um, screws. There's no harm to anything. It doesn't, it doesn't cause any less stability. So let's do that. And these are the little things that you do to shave off, you know, a couple millimeters here and there. Um, when you're trying to get to a really, really light or small quad. Don't want to get in there. Oops, there's something that I messed up there. I guess I'll just do this. Two more. Oh, there's another one in here. God darn. Alright. I mean, it's automatic, but boy, I swear it's extremely slow. All right, last one. So I'll just do it like this. All right, so uh, with the board inverted like this, or the screws, I mean, inverted on the board, um, we can now go to the uh, ESC, snap everything in properly, take out the one that we don't need down here. So let me get rid of this real quick. screws back in the door and now we will lay this down in here
and put your next spacer in. Yeah, I've only burned about a few, uh, I don't know, I'm sure I'm in the three, 400 board range now of how many boards I've fried along the way. So, but I appreciate it. I take that as a nice compliment. All right, last, last standoff. Now what we can do is we're just going to tighten these down and it'll go through the frame and tighten down nicely onto the bottom. The cool part is, is once you have some of these tightened, if you ever need to change the screws out, they will actually come out pretty fairly easy because with the other screws tightened, it pushes through without having to spin those standoffs. So it actually works out to your benefit uh, doing it like this sometimes. Okay, almost done. stop right there and see if I can get these two to pop right through there. Yep. And now we'll finish these two. I think building your own is kind of important, I agree. Um, you know, sometimes it's important to build it, but sometimes the risk, you know, or time constraints, I mean, you know, I can't, I mean, not everybody's got time to build a quad and troubleshoot. But either way, whatever makes you happy. Come on, let's get this. What made me happy is like the end thing will go right in there. Come on. Come on, come on. There you go. One, two. Perfect. Look at this one. There it is. Last one right here. One, two. All right, yeah, let's try some of these smaller casters here. I'll show you guys exactly what I'm talking about then because this is actually a pretty good uh, pretty good opportunity to show you about the um, getting one screw out when one screw is not right so you don't have to unscrew the whole thing. Let me go ahead and just fasten this down real quick. 
There's one. And then two. See, that's what I was thinking is I'm, I'm right now, I've been looking for some land and I mean, I've got land, but the whole idea was to build a building with a shop in it so customers could come in and you hold a workshop, you know, and they come in and they build it. Um, I like that idea. Uh, so hopefully we can get going with that soon. All right, so there's three of the four. Now, what you can tell is this screw right here uh, is too short, okay? So I'm going to... Because of the way this is attached, I don't have to do anything because everything's gonna stay in place. So, oops, I think that's the wrong screw. I just grabbed the wrong one, hold on. Um, yeah, it's this one here. And what'll happen is, because it's got pressure from everything else, your standoffs will stay in the same spot. So you don't have to worry about your standoffs falling off or anything. Just go ahead and take the screw out. And then what you'll do is, put the right size screw in there and apparently this is colored wrong or I just have a screw that's wrong. So let me see. Okay, that's, that, that's the bad one and that is, oh yeah, so that's colored wrong. I did that. 1,000 of them and I colored one wrong. I'm gonna go ahead and put this one in. And then you can just screw it back in and everything stays in place so it does make it easy. back and there you go and we have our last bit right here and now everything's starting to take shape all right so there you go everything fits here just fine uh, it's all level Everything looks clean as far as this goes. So now what we're gonna do is get ready with the rest of it by getting our receiver hooked up. So we're gonna go back to this view only so I can use magnifying glass. All right, so we're very close to where we need to be. Uh, and I will just wind this wire up a little bit. And let me see, how do I wanna get there? Just so that Perfect. I'm going to keep this out of the way for now. Because we still got to do live a wire, but we've got one, two, and three right there. So it should be about, I'll take it that long. So let's do that. Let's do this. Oh, we could come this way and make it even shorter. All right, either way, let's snip these right here. And let's go ahead, strip the wires, get them tinned, and get our our receiver connected. Uh, thank you, Blizzard. I appreciate you, man. I, I really like this frame. I like this build as well. Um, it was surprisingly more powerful than I expected, but that seems to be what I say about all of them now, so I must be getting pretty old. Um, I can no longer expect my own builds to go that fast. Uh, Alright, so let me just get these tin real quick. There's one, two, three. There we go. Okay. And so we know the green is going to be our S bus, so we're just going to go ahead and attach these accordingly. And it's going to go uh, 
Let me twist this up a little bit more. So we've got five volt S bus ground. Let's go ahead and drop our five volt first. I'll go right here. Now let's take our S bus. Well, actually it's five volt ground S bus, my bad. Let's do our ground, which will go. Okay. I think I'll pull the S bus in a little early and go this way. And there we go. So our receiver is now wired. We can get these wires out of the way. Okay. That's right, Danny. Yours is the next one, my friend. I'm looking forward to it. Um, I don't know. I haven't done the pricing. Usually I always try to get my pricing done pretty quickly, but I haven't used the DVR before or priced it out as a bundle, but I will very shortly. Uh, most likely tonight when I'm done with this one and I know all that it entails but there will be like I said it'll be a build your own kit so um, I'll put the kit out there ASAP as well uh, all right so now where do I want to go next all right so if I control it, we've got camera all right so let's look at the way we're going to assemble this camera and let's look at our VTX so on our VTX uh, we need to take our video and we have to splice it into here and so let me look at this again. This tiny, tiny, tiny piece of paper. And we are going to go VCC, and I believe that's going to be a 5 volt. Yep. Okay. So we need to find a 5 volt, and we're going to use some of this leftover wire. That's what I'm telling you guys save your wire. So we are going to take from your DVR, uh, we are going to, and this DVR is laying. Mm -hmm, this way so the colors are going to go ground 5 volt video audio great okay and this is uh, this goes here so let's just do that real quick so we can use these these three wires are going to do everything that we need so let's go ahead and pop them on there Get some soldering done. No room for error on this DVR. So get your cuts as small as possible. Make sure your tip of your iron is ready. And what did I say? I said ground positive and video. I believe that's what this says here. Again, flip it over. Yeah, ground five volt and video. All right. ground by volt and there's your video it's done wired and your DVR is now finished uh, okay so uh, and then on here Let's see, we need a 5 volt, which I can probably boost off of the 5 volt out. That's a good idea. Let's do that. Let's go ahead and utilize the VTX for a little bit. Although, I have another 5 volt, but uh, yeah, let's just try it. See how it does. We've got video. pretty small connection here so uh, I may need to do this like this I guess definitely don't need all that wire
Alright. So we're gonna get pre tin now. <laughs> Okay, so that's done. Got those done. Yeah, my Lego guys. They're awesome, right? I love them. All right, so we've got the VTX to the DVR. I'm excited about that. Now we just need to get the um, uh, video also to the camera. And that's going to come over to here. And it's going to go to right here. And then uh, we're going to run these and that'll take care of the VTX. So we're going to keep using some of our wire. Uh, and let me find out where I have a good link of wire here. Mm. I guess I'll take this one. I like these wires a lot. This is another fresh guy set of wires. And I need to go not too far. So I will just take a little bit. Upside down, so let's just do this much. Okay, start with video. Okay, that's done. Then we'll do our power. And get our ground. Close those up. done
finish this off here. We're going to go to our, our first one. Ground a second. Two. This yellow wire that we initially started with, that's our next one. We'll come over the top here. That's going to be for our smart audio. That'll be three. And now the tricky part is we've got to get this video on here and I don't like the way it's looking so let's see if I can make this work without stretching the wires too far. Because as soon as I do this one the other one's going to want to pop off. So i got to get them both to stick. Ah. Come on. Oh, it looks like it'll hold. There you go. So let's clean that up, put some glue on it. The audio and video, or the video is done. Let's go ahead and some glue to hold that. Uh, yeah, I'm running beta flight. Yes, sir. Let me grab a can of air here. Real quick way to make glue dry faster and get a good bond. And you can instantly touch it. It's done sticking. But it holds really well. All right, so VTX is done. DVR is done. Uh, let me make sure one more time before I glue that up. And that would be that it looks like this with the button. Yep, that's right. So buttons on that side, which means that we have ground five video. Perfect. That looks good. All right, so let's go ahead and do that down. Okay, coming to the finish line. Here we go. Very least we can power it up and make sure nothing explodes. Yeah, those wires should fit nice. All right. So now that we've got that, it's got our VTX, and that is going to be our Cadex. I just got to find my that little standard mount. See how these fit. Oh, that's terrible. All right, one second, and I will get this mounted. And I think I'll use a six millimeter. Let's go something like this. This. Two 
locking fashions for this next one. And we're getting to the end. We're getting there. I see the light. <coughs> I guess we're gonna have to start flying these things every day so I'm gonna start with this one being the first flight video so you guys can see how that DDR does see if it's worth it and remember guys I got no reason to lie if I don't like it nobody gives me any of this stuff to test for free so if I don't like it I'll let you know okay Oh my goodness, is this not the right count? Sun, sun, sun. Oh, wonderful. My bad, one second. the right mount get the camera done I mean pretty much outside of just uh, make sure I don't have the screw stuck up here where did that last one go pretty much outside of a few small things this is about done I need to find that screw which it's not on the motor so that's good enough for me <clears throat> All right, last one. I put the camera in, and we're done. So let's start it up real quick and see if we have any smoke. Caddix on. Oh yeah, that's a nice fit. See? That's what it's gonna look like. It looks pretty good. Uh, let's go ahead and get the screws for it.
Okay, so 5 0 ground. So we've got this like this pretty much. Let's make sure that fits. Should go perfect like this. And then we'll cut the wires and begin recording to DVR. Okay, now back to the one angle only because I need the magnifying glass. Let's see where I'm at. I've got, uh, it looks like I've got ground camera 5 volt right here. So we're running a very, very, very short distance. So let's just pop it down right there. And you've got room for a Vi fly in here, a uh, finder too, and things like that. So there's definitely some options here. Okay, get that attached. Okay. So, uh, looks like we've got everything done for the most part. Um, so now, uh, we will put the second set of screws in, get the lipo set up, and get ready to turn the sucker on. And hopefully, have something very positive to show you. screws here for the motors and this thing can get closed up
Okay. All right. So we said we were going to go with 25, or I mean, sorry, 15 uh, spacers, so, or standoffs. So let me just check the rest of this out real quick and make sure everything else looks good. Let me turn this just a little bit. Keep those wires somewhat twisted. It's going to sit like this. It's going to come up. That should look good. All right, so now I need uh, to do a volt test on this real quick. Make sure nothing's grounded. Let's see where we're at. Excellent. So far so good. Now let's just get, uh, let me see. I'm gonna grab a different connector this time. It's not, uh, let me see. Only because I wanna screw around with this a little bit. <clears throat> so don't judge me on what I'm about to do next. But I want to see what the JST will do. I usually put XT60s on here. But just for the giggles of it, I want to try JST. So hold on. Yeah, that's not going to work. That's the wrong plug. Wonderful. Well, there goes that idea. I guess it's XT60 or nothing. We we'll have an XT60 then. Oh yeah, I see it, thanks. Oh yeah, they're all over the place. Thanks for pointing it out. <clears throat> There's about three of them on this motor, one on that one. Oh, thanks man, good eyes. Yeah, all right, so let's see what we got. short run so I'll just keep it kind of simple I guess yeah they do I just I was I've, I've really honestly I've never used JST because the wires are really too small uh, and so the resistance is there but I just went through my inventory and found like 30 brand new batteries with JST like two cell and three cell I'm like oh crap I might as well try to use them but yeah it's too much of a pain I'm not gonna worry about it I had, a, I had a wild hair for a second, and then I realized that both sides, both ends are female, so it's not gonna help. Oh, you guys are looking at the wrong screen, sorry. Let's go that route so I can use this. All right.
All right, let's see. All right, there's our XT60. There's our beautiful quad. And there is our connection that we need to make, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, those are done. That should look nice when it's done. All right, now for here, put a capacitor on. All right, so in this case, what I think I want to do, and I'm pretty sure I have the room to actually do it in here. Uh, I could put it right here. And that would sit pretty nice. I can put this, but you know what? No, the spacers are gonna go right there. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this cap, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in a sleeve here. A little thing try to make it look like an exhaust pipe you see it's kind of neat but anyways it's just kind of a um, uh, yeah and for the ESC's itself I mean um, it, it just helps across the board now uh, helps to eliminate damage actually and believe it or not um, not just for the videos but for overall uh, noise reduction and the flying in general uh, companies like uh, Hobby Wing are now posting on their boards. I, I just got their batch in. It says that uh, um, you risk blowing the board or damaging the board if you do not use their cap now. So uh, on their ESCs, their 45 amp, they are requiring it <coughs> with or without the VTX. So 
Let's see, I think I will put this just... Hmm. Nope, nope. Oh, this is the fun part. I thought I could put it like right here, but there's no... I didn't prepare for that. Hmm, mm hmm. I guess I may just put it on this wire for now, just so we can get going with this. Uh, I can drop this right here. And right there. I think that'll hold pretty good. Alright. Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. All right. <clears throat> that should work nicely right there.
15, 2 is a 3, so that should be this right here. And that should wrap it up. So let's go ahead and get these final pieces on. All right, getting ready to close it up. Clean it up and see if it doesn't blow up. <clears throat> All right. We'll get a final weight on it. That was three millimeters. So we got 15, 20, and then the tube given up. So that means that should fit with no problem. The 15 goes underneath. Seventeen, nineteen, uh, twenty-two, twenty-four. Let's go with a twenty. Oh, that's gonna be tough. Twenty-five or twenty-six. Let's go with a twenty-five. Let's see if we can get this to go all the way through first. use two different screws. Let's use a, let's see, two, four, seven, uh, let's use a 12. What did I see that? 12 would be better. 10. A 10 would be better. All right, this is it. Two more screws and this sucker is finished. Uh, ten's not that good, actually. That'll work for now. Let's get one more. Fifteen. One more three millimeter. And let's get this job done. One, All right, there's two, I'll change this 10 for 12, and this quad, for the most part, what you see is it, let me get this, where did I go? So, let's put this on here. All right, the only thing left is putting the uh, antennas out, the receiver antennas, which is easy because I made these holes for them. So let's put that and then this sucker is done. Oh my Lord. <laughs> 
Come on already. All right. There's one and there's the other. And so what I will do. Always have to refresh my memory on these things. But this is how we're going to do it. For that. Let's find another set of tweezers here. There we go.
Okay, time to get. Uh, time, well, time to see if this thing is any shorts. So, uh, no laughing, please. We don't want to laugh at my f mistakes on this, if there are any. But uh, let me switch this camera now. So, let's do this. Nope. It's that one. There you go. All right. So, this is it. After, uh, I don't know, we started around 10.30. It's now 1.30, so about three hours. Um, but this is the uh, uh, Banshee 345. Uh, version 1. Uh, it's got on the back, there's your DVR, there's your VTX, uh, here is your, well, let me turn it this way because the capacitor's in the way, yeah, 40 amp ESC, um, flight controller, Cadex camera, and then your capacitor on the back that looks like it's an exhaust pipe. That does kind of a little neat look. And we've got the XT60 connection on the front. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab a battery. Uh, shit. Yeah, 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 no pressure. Hi, hi, don't, don't, you're jinxing me. Uh, hold on, let's get my antenna on there. All right, so let's go and see. One second, I'll be right back. Uh, let me see. I'd like to do this so y'all can see it. So let me put this here, and let me grab this. Let me move a couple things around here, and this way I can turn the DC supply on. Move a few things around, that's all. All right. All right. Where are we at? Okay. So, uh, let's get the camera back on the issue items at hand here. Hey, there I am. Where's my ugly mug? And you've got the quad. I'm gonna get all this other crap out of the way. We're gonna do a lot of prayer because I cannot afford for this to not go well. But it would be my luck. I'm on a running streak of things happening live. So here we go. Hey! Hmm. There's that. Looks like a beautiful sound. Got VTX light on. Got lights everywhere. Uh, let's go and got DVR lights on the bottom too. That's pretty cool. Haven't used that yet, so it's all new to me. Let's go grab some FPV goggles and see if we've got video. What? Where's the camera? And there you go. We got our video working, so there's me waving my hand. Man, now that's some cool stuff. So, so far it looks like we've got everything working very well. Uh, so that's nice to know. And uh, all right, well, I've got to now bind it and program it and get it done in beta flight. Um, so I don't know if you guys want to stay on for that, but that's going to take a while. So I may just stop it here and get this thing cleaned up. I'm really happy with this build. I hope you guys like it. Um, I've got to, the program is going to take a little bit. Let me go put some props on it though, just so I can go show you guys what it's going to look like here. Uh, but I do like that. I hope you all do too. Uh, there it is again. So, oh wait, you're looking from the bottom. So there you go. I'll just leave that right there. Give me one second. Go get some props here.
Thanks, man. I'm glad you guys like it. It's uh, it'll be pretty fun. To, I mean, this is gonna be a great one. I think it's gonna do really well uh, with 40 amps. Yeah. Uh, let me just tighten this down. I've got to get a weight on this too, don't I? Give me a second, I get the scale. We can see how much it weighs. All right. So, uh, let's go and see. Let's go grab a scale. Be right back. Okay, guys. I think you can see the scale. So, let me just get my butt out of the way. Let's get my Lego guy. We'll weigh him with and without the Lego guy. That sounds fair. All right, let's get it to zero. All right, so uh, here goes. So this is 178 grams uh, with the three inch props on a 40 amp ESC with the boards, uh, four 20 millimeter boards, the Cadex camera, the 41407 motors, everything except the LiPo, 178 grams. Um, I gotta say that I'm pretty pleased with that, guys. Uh, and, you know, the thing is, is I can put these larger uh, Chaos ones on, because I believe that that's pretty much similar to what this one weighs. So, one, I mean, my God, I think, I think they're very, very, and that's with the battery strap. So hold on, I have a battery strap on there. So let me grab a battery strap. I have a feeling these two are identical. Uh, no, actually the thinner one weighs less. When you look at it, it's got four millimeter. Uh, so there you go. 180, 178, not bad. Um, these motors are gonna probably push out quite a bit more power. These, uh, the Chaos, these are, it's a much bigger, it's a Tornado series from Black Brother, probably. But, um, I'll fire this up here later. Uh, but there you go. 170, I, I think that's pretty good. Anyways, listen, uh, let me switch cameras now and do this. There. All right, so, uh, obviously this is the first video, uh, that I've done live on YouTube. Um, I appreciate y'all. Those of you that did hang out through the whole thing, I really do appreciate it. I'm going to be doing a lot more videos. I have something really cool that I did for y'all. Uh, that I'm going to show you guys. There's going to be a video going up tonight, and it's about how I draw out everything uh, in CAD, including flight controllers, cameras, and everything. So you're going to see me recreating a Hobby Wing ESC and flight controller. Just kind of some things to show you how I go about the process of designing a quad. Uh, again, this is the Banshee 345 V1. I'm extremely excited about it. I really appreciate you that you guys that tuned in. I wish y'all the best, and uh, I'll put some pictures of this and the flight and pricing and everything uh, tonight and tomorrow morning. So we'll have a video a day at least, okay? God bless, guys. I appreciate y'all, and I hope y'all have a great evening. Take care. Bye.